Welcome to another edition of Devotions for Troubled Times as we continue to work our way through the COVID-19 virus. Ed Stetzer said last week that we haven't reached the crisis yet. That's comforting, isn't it? Um, he said that by the end of this week, we should probably all know someone who has been infected with COVID-19, and perhaps by the end of another month, we will all know someone who has died from COVID-19. That's rather gloom and gloomy and disturbing, and yet the question is, what are we going to do, and how are we going to keep our hope fixed upon our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How are we going to trust and not doubt? And so I'm looking this week from the Benson and Benson uh, Disciplines for a Daily Life. I'm looking at uh, chapter 21, I believe it is, on doubts. And we want to give all of our doubts and all of our concerns to our Lord and Savior. So as we open, the prayer this morning is, Almighty God, Lord of the storm and of the calm, of day and of night, of life and of death, grant us so to have our hearts stayed upon your faithfulness, your unchangeableness, and your love, that whatever happens to us, we may look upon you with untroubled eyes. We ask this for mercy's sake. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 42, and I won't read the entire psalm every day, but since this is Monday, I'll read it. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep, at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning? Because of the oppression of the enemy. As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me. While they say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. These are great words. We have to keep turning back to God. We have to keep trusting him. When the world says, where is your God? We have to just keep turning to him and knowing that he's there. The reading from the devotional today for the gospel is from Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. I won't read all that to you, but it's the story of the centurion who comes to Jesus and asks Jesus to heal his servant. And Jesus is willing to go with him to his house, even though that would be defiling for him as a Jew. But the centurion says, no, you don't, you don't need to do that. I am a man under authority, even as you are. And if you just speak the word, I know it'll be done. And, you know, the, the faith of that centurion is just remarkable, but also the power of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ through it, that even at a distance, the centurion could ask, he could make the request, and his servant was made well at that very hour. Praise God. 
Well, a reflection that um, on prayer and the importance of prayer, especially in a time like this when we have doubts and we need to have our hope bolstered. Whether one uses the words of the Bible or a traditional collection or formulates his own prayer is immaterial, provided what is expressed is the voice of the soul. Psychologically, the act of praying centers attention on the higher emotions. It unifies the spirit. It crystallizes motives. It clarifies judgment. It releases latent powers and reinforces confidence that what needs to be done can be done. Spiritually, the power of God is ever waiting to bestow his strength on those who will receive it. And he finds a channel through our prayers. When we pray, God is present, he's ready, he's waiting, and he will answer. He may not answer the way we want, he may not answer when we want, but he always hears, he always answers, and he always moves. The benefits of such praying are seldom disputed. Well, the benediction at the end, Father and God, you know the work, the worry, and the weariness, which day by day and week after week weigh so heavily upon our lives. You know the burden, Father, of the COVID-19 and all of the things that it has changed in our life. So often we do grow faint and fearful, disturbed and doubtful, we long for rest and peace and assurance of faith. May we, today and every day, so wait upon you in prayer and be renewed with spiritual might that we shall fight the good fight and keep the faith. For the Jesus Christ's sake we pray. Amen. Closing thought, make this a day of prayer. Cast all your cares upon Jesus, for he cares for you. God bless you, and have a great day of focusing your eyes and your heart on Jesus. He's there, and he will answer.